Welcome back, and welcome to another uh, episode of Unreal Engine Course. In this, uh, in this particular video, we're going to look at uh, landscapes and landscape uh, textures and materials, rather, and uh, and how to get those uh, get those all working with layers. So uh, I hope you enjoy the video, and thanks for watching. Um, we're going to work on a terrain in this uh, in this section of the course. And to do that, we're going to use this website called Terrain Party. Terrain Party is a website where we can download uh, a height map of a particular part of the world. And I've selected a little piece of Switzerland here because it's nice and mountainous. It's got very rugged mountains, and we can turn that into a very nice and workable terrain fairly simply. All you do is you move this uh, this square to the part of the world where you want to uh, get a height map, and you come over here and click download or export. You can also change the size of this square with these plus and minus buttons. And like I said, the name of the site, the name of the website is terrain.party. Uh, I've already downloaded this, so I'm just going to move straight on to Unreal Engine 4. So here we are in Unreal Engine 4, and to create a terrain, the first thing we're going to want is a new map. So I'm going to go up here to File and New Level, and we'll just select this empty one, and we'll delete a couple things. We don't need this panel, and we don't need this player start. There's, there's a reason for that. We'll be able to start on our terrain wherever we've navigated to, and we'll just start right there. It's very convenient. We'll add a player start later in as part of the game. For now, this works. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, and save that current drain to my map area here, and we'll just call this uh, we'll call this our open world. Maybe this will be the main part, and uh, we'll we'll head off from this open world into other levels to do different things. That'll be nice. Uh, at least that's a general idea, anyway. Up here in the upper left hand corner where we see the modes, I'm going to go into the uh, landscape mode. And I'm going to select import from file and the file that I have are these these are what I downloaded in that zip file what you get is uh, four files you get one in aster and merged and strm and these are like uh, surveying things I, I believe uh, but I've found for building terrains in unreal the aster is the best one so I'm going to select that and uh, there's our gigantic terrain uh, it's huge and it's mountainous. Um, I'm going to come down here and click fit to data just to make sure that it that it fitted that properly. Uh, you have a material section here. We're going to be adding a landscape material ourselves uh, later, so we won't worry about that. We'll just click import. That'll import that file and build up our gigantic terrain. Um, very rugged and probably way too rugged to even be able to play the game in. Uh, there is a little bit when you do this with these files I've noticed there's a little bit of weirdness on the edges we can take care of that manually later for now uh, what I want to do is go back into my uh, into my place mode over here and uh, select this terrain and over here under the Z scale for this terrain, I'm going to reduce this quite a lot uh, maybe reduce it down to 20 and we'll, we'll check that out so there's these little edges on here but we can uh, we can smooth that out or even cover it up with something. Uh, we might block this off a little bit inside this anyway. Um, let's play and see what that looks like from down here at the level. We'll go up here. Yeah, somewhere around in here, you'd probably hit a wall anyway and can't go any further. We don't want the player to be able to fall off the edge, so we might not worry about those edges. So let's see, is this, uh, is this nice? It's a bit, uh, it's a bit rugged, uh, but uh, but I think it's navigable for the most part. We can crawl around on it pretty easily, and do things. There's a interesting uh, piece of maybe riverbed or something running through it here. Uh, that could be uh, have some interesting potential. Uh, so that's our terrain. We just built a terrain out of a piece of the real world, and we have some really nice looking mountains, and we've scaled them down. And uh, the next thing to do is to work on uh, a texture for it. All right, so we have our terrain. And now we're going to start uh, building a texture for it. So I'm going to go into here. Actually, I think what I want is a... Uh, where did it end up putting that? Did it create it? No, it didn't do that. Okay. 
I'm going to go in here and create a new folder and I'm just going to call it landscape and everything to do with this landscape is going to be in here so let's create a new folder called materials this will be where our landscape material stuff is and we'll come down here and create a new material and we will call this uh, uh, well we called this our open world I think did we call the what did we call it the level let's go back and take a look maps we called it open yeah we called it open world so in our landscape materials let's call this our I'm going to rename it rename there it is I'm going to call it open world material so this is going to be our landscape material so there's a couple of things that we can do here or need to do here. The first thing and the simplest thing that we need to do is make it into an actual landscape material by adding in what's called a layer blend. Mm. Let's type in landscape. Landscape layer blend is what we want. So this node, this layer blend node, is simply, quite simply, going to just hook right over here into the base color. Of our, let me expand this up a little bit so you can see it. Okay, I just temporarily lost my place here. Um, so what uh, what we want to do is go and hook this into the base color for now. And this is called a layer blend. Um, what we're going to do initially is just hook some colors into this and we'll get to putting some materials on them shortly and then we're going to fix it up for the distance and uh, and everything. Uh, for now, what we want to do is with the layer blend selected, come over here and we'll put some layers in it by clicking this plus a few times. And we will call these... Hmm, uh, open these out. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, where it says none here, I'm just going to call this uh, L1 for layer 1. And we'll call this L2 for layer 2. And L3 for layer 3. So this could be grass or whatever, but we don't have, we're not going to put any grass and stuff in just yet. <clears throat> what we're going to do is throw some colors in here to see how this operates. So what I'm going to do is press and hold the three and I'm going to click and I'm going to get this uh, three way one here and we'll just set this to green. And we'll hook it into layer one. And I will explain this shortly. We need two more for layer two and layer three. And we'll make this one, I don't know, uh, maybe a brown color. And this last one, <clears throat> so that might be mud or something like that. And this last one will make it be rock and we'll make it kind of a gray. Um, kind of a dark gray, maybe something like that. Okay, <clears throat> so there is our uh, our basic landscape material, and I'll show you what happens when we apply this. What happens is this this layer blend allows the landscape to use and mix these layers on the landscape in an appropriate way. So we're just going to go back over here to landscape, and we're going to go to paint. And uh, actually, what before we do that, we can go back here to our place mode, and we've got to assign that landscape material, and we want to assign it to open world material. And of course, it's going to compile the shaders, so I will uh, not make you sit through that. Okay, so once the shaders are compiled, you'll see your terrain turns entirely black. So over here in our paint mode, you'll see we have these three layers. We now have to assign or create a layer info. And the way we're going to do that is just click on this plus right here. And we'll select 
weight blend layer and we'll go ahead and put that right there and it says open world uh, shared assets and we're okay with that and sometimes things uh, it takes a while to think when it's doing this there it is and it took that first layer and made the whole thing green based on the first layer so we'll just go ahead and create these world blend layer click OK and the next one we need to create that and click OK and we're all set up we can now click on these and paint uh, of course it's gonna compile shaders again uh, sometimes when you're getting these things set up initially there can be a lot of shader compiling so I'm going to pause the video and let that compile and I will be right back okay uh, the shaders are compiled sometimes uh, with some of these versions you have to stop and restart the engine to get the uh, shaders to compile properly uh, so here we are if we go over here to yellow now we can paint yellow on the landscape if we go here to gray we can paint the gray on the landscape and it creates a blend between them uh, it's very nice <laughs> but we don't really want to hand paint the whole terrain and we certainly don't want to paint it in these colors we want to use landscape textures and we want to have some automatic assignment of these let me uh, control Z this painting out of here and uh, let's go back to our uh, landscape material so here's our landscape materials here's our landscape material pop this up here okay we're back so currently we have uh, this uh, this material it's a landscape material with three layers but we want to do more than that and so what we really we don't want to deal with all of this gobbledygook here we want to treat this as a single material attribute so if we come over, if we select this node and come over here where it says use material attributes and click that this becomes a material output node where this is the all of the material attributes go into here now we can no longer just hook this up okay it'll hook up but when we try to uh, apply it we're going to get an error so we're going to break that and what we're going to come on break that link what we're going to do is come over here to our landscape materials i'm going to go here to materials and textures and i'm going to create a material function and we'll call this uh color to material attribute attributes underscore mf for material function i'll take this drag it up here drop it in here and double click on it now we have an output and whatever we put into here is what we're going to get out of here and we're going to need an input as well and so the input the function input is just going to be some color but we need to get <clears throat> turn that into material attributes and we just want this color to be our base color and we're going to add some stuff into this later and maybe even rename this function and plug this into here now we have a convenient function that we can use to bridge this color coming out of here out to here and at this point everything should work exactly as it was before but we're opening ourselves up now to be able to do some really really nice stuff with material functions and doing some calculations and things and keep things nice and clean and we'll just pass around these material attributes from here on out okay so the next thing we're going to do is take our color scheme here and set it up so that it places different colors in an automatic manner on our landscape <clears throat> based on the slope of the terrain at any given point and so to accomplish that we're going to do a couple of things we're going to first select our blend layers we're going to add a new one it's down here at the bottom open it up we're going to call it auto um, 
auto paint maybe and we'll grab it we should be able to grab it and pull it up to the top there it is it is it's on top <laughs> and I'm gonna set the preview weight of this to one point zero so it's the automatic layer and there we are it's on top now what we want to get is a special kind of node called world align blend and there it is and we want two of these and we're going to do two of them because we're going to uh, blend these uh, together in two stages and because we're working with material attributes we also need a couple of nodes called blend uh, blend material attributes and we'll need a couple of these now what we're going to do is take the vertex normals out of here and the vertex normals are a vector that points in the direction that the face of of a of the terrain or any model is pointing the normal is always pointing how the face is pointing we're going to plug this into the alpha excuse me of this and we're going to plug this one into the alpha of this one and what we're going to blend between are these colors coming out of here i'm going to move this stuff around a little bit we want to blend uh, between the outputs of these so let me rearrange this a little bit we're going to take the green and put it into the a uh, come on oh that's because this is material attributes uh color oh you know what i made a little i'm going to do a little rearranging thing here while well, i stuck that conveniently into there we'll plug this directly into there we'll break these links um come on break links and break links we need that node so we need uh color to what I call it you know, back here our material function we need to copy this three times we need three of these we can plug the color into there and this output here into a color into here this output into B then move this along move this back this output into a plug this into here and this output into B and this output into our auto layer we can grab these pull them up here make this a little neater okay so now I know that was a little bit crazy what's happening it's gonna take the the vertex normals of this and use it to blend between these two values between this value and this value it's also gonna take the vertex normal and take the output of that and blend it between the output of these two and this meaning we're going to get a blending between all three based on the vertex normals that's going to decide what the final color output is from our shader or from our material having said that we want to control a couple of things about this uh, one of the things that we want to do is control the sharpness and the other is the blend bias 
So I'm going to right click on this and promote this to a parameter. And we'll rename this. Ah. We will rename this to uh, L1 blend sharpness. And we'll promote this bias as well. And we'll call it L1 blend bias. Same with these two. Where to go? Okay. Uh, I don't know what I was doing there. For some reason, I was selecting convert to parameter. I wanted promote to parameter. Uh, we'll rename this to L2 blend sharpness. Ah, I did it again. <laughs> promote to parameter. Come on. We'll call this L2 blend bias. And that's all hooked up and we should have our blending going on between these now. Let's save. And we're going to come back here and I'm going to right click on our open world material and I'm going to create a material instance and we'll call this open world MI for material instance. We'll open that up and we have some parameters now and we can play around with these we can we can set this to something like five and uh, we can take this blend sharpness and here we see the green is now down there uh, if we set this to something like five and run this up here we go so now we can maneuver these around a little bit. We can move this around. Uh, maybe we need to lower this or raise it. Five. Hmm. Can't go any higher. That can come up all the way up to here. Not sure why this one won't raise above that point. Oh, that one's got to be negative. That's right. There we go. So we can move these around. Good. We can save this material instance. Go back to our open world here. We'll go back here and select our world and we'll change the material here to our material instance. That way we can adjust things on the material. And of course the shaders have to compile so I'll pause the video and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our materials working. Here's our material instance. Now we want to get it working on the uh, on the landscape I'm gonna switch these I'm gonna make this the gray one down to white and bring this down to some kind of dark gray and this one is gonna become the green one This one's gray. This one's going to become the green one. Oh, I didn't click OK. <laughs> green. Green. Cancel. Green. Green. OK. Uh, hopefully those will switch around now. Gray, <laughs> yellow, green. And how come this didn't swap around? Oh, I have 
to apply it. Now it's going to want to recompile shaders again. Okay, the compilers are, or the shaders rather, are done compiling, and we have our uh, material instance here uh, that we can adjust. So let's go see what the terrain looks like with this material on it. And it looks all gray at the moment. Maybe. What moves the gray? This moves the green. Oh, it's just base material for some reason. Hmm. Oh. It's starting to come through now. With lots of green. paint this uh, layer zero on. Now we can start twiddling with this material instance and see what we can get here. Let's move this up to the very, very flattest. Oh, okay, the, the yellow is starting to come through now. Minus. How about if we put L1 at minus 15? Sixty-seven. Might have run these up a little bit high. There we go. Now we're getting dirt and green in. Let's move L2 to minus 18. And L2 blend bias, blend sharpness rather, to about 60. We've got some notes here. There we go. <clears throat> That might be a little more interesting, and we can tweak those a little bit. Bring the grass up a little bit more. So let's uh, <coughs> fly down here and take a look at it down at ground level. So... So if the yellow represents dirt, the green kind of represents grass, and this represents rock, uh, we might have something going here. We can adjust LB a little easier to see when it really is rock and dirt and grass, and we'll, uh, we'll do that next. So, all right, that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to take a look at uh, putting some real textures on our landscape. I uh, hope you enjoy it. And uh, thanks for watching. If you would like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you want to get notifications when I upload another video, hit that notify button. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.